everybody, it's Lisa Burningham. Today I'm going to be showing you how I took this old, scratched up, worn Bombay chest and gave it a makeover. I'm going to transform it into a fresh, updated piece that's going to be perfect for this blank wall. Now we are in my office and underneath this painting that my grandma did, I had this blank space that I wanted to fill it. I also needed some extra storage. So this piece is going to be a perfect addition. I had this piece, I originally bought it from the Bombay company lots of years ago and it's been used it's been loved it's been worn and so it's been hidden because i didn't want to have it out plus the color really didn't go with my aesthetic i'm going to give it a fresh coat of paint i'm going to clean it up and we're going to make this thing look better than new First off, I needed to remove all of the hardware and the hinges and the screws. I like to do this because when I go to paint, it makes it so much easier because I don't have to worry about all of those metal pieces and the paint will go on smoother. So I took my screwdriver and I just took everything off. The knobs, the hinges, all of it. Once I was finished, I placed all of those pieces into individual plastic bags. I do this so I can organize them and I know exactly where they came from and where they need to go when I go to reassemble my piece. I got some blue painters tape and a marker and I put a little tag on each of the baggies so everything was organized and easily discernible about where to put it back. I took my Bombay chest outside to a well ventilated area and I got out my sander. I'm going to lightly sand this piece for a few reasons. The first is because it did have those scratches and scuff marks on the top that I really wanted to get rid of. And also I wanted to get a little bit of that finish coat off the top. It was pretty shiny and I knew that the paint wouldn't penetrate as well. And by scuffing up your pieces, it gives your paint something to really kind of hold on to. The paint will adhere better to a scuffed up surface. And the reason why I'm using a light sandpaper is because this piece isn't a solid wood piece. It's a veneer. So if I used a heavy duty sandpaper, it would sand right through the veneer and right into the plywood. And we don't want to see any of the plywood showing through. So a light sandpaper is the way to go. Once my piece was sanded, I got a damp, lint-free cloth and I wiped the whole thing down really well and then I let it completely dry. The next part is to remove the feet. I had my strong twin boys help me out with this. They lifted it up and put it on top of some plastic containers. I like doing this because then it's elevated and when you're painting, you can easily paint the bottom but also if there's any paint that drips down, it won't pool along the base of the piece. It'll just drip off onto the ground. Now everything is prepped and ready for paint. The paint that I chose was a chalk paint. I got this Kills chalk style paint in the color white. I know I really went out on a limb on this one. But because I had a white desk and I have the white buffet, I wanted it to have another white piece in the room so everything coordinated really well. Plus, when I'm showing you all my DIYs and crafting, white is a great backdrop for all those things so that they will pop. So white was a natural color for me to choose. So I took this paint and the first thing that I did was I brushed it on with just a paintbrush. I did a paintbrush because I wanted to be able to get into all of those nooks and crannies and there was some raised detail on the door so I wanted to make sure that I got in there really well. After the first coat was done, it looked pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. But just expect that when you're working with a piece that has a really saturated color or a dark stain, it's not gonna be perfect on the first run. I'm going to do three coats on mine. So after my first coat dried, I decided I was going to use my paint sprayer. I got this paint sprayer on Amazon a few months back, but I just haven't been brave enough to get it out. So I thought I would try it for this project. And let me tell you, it was amazing. 
it went on so smoothly and it was 10 times faster than painting with a brush. It was really evenly coated. So I slowly and steadily waved the paint sprayer over all my pieces. I let the first coat of paint dry for a few hours and then repeated the painting process for again, a total of three coats of paint. Next, it's time to paint the feet and to hold them in place, I'm using a paper cup. I just poked the metal part that was at the bottom of the feet into the bottom of the paper cup and it held it in place nicely. Again, I used my paint sprayer and I gave these feet a couple of coats and then I let them dry completely. If you're interested in an affordable paint sprayer, I will leave a link to where I got this on Amazon. It's not sponsored. It's just one that I saw that had a really great reviews and worked nicely for me. After all of my pieces had completely dried overnight, I decided that I wanted to beautify and customize this piece. And I'm doing it with this champagne metallic paint that I got at Michael's. I have used that all over this room. I've used it on my desk. I used it on the base of my lamps. I even used it on the curtain rods. So it was a natural choice to use this as the accent on my piece because then it really tied in with the rest of the room. It's like the bottomless container of paint. It just keeps on giving and I think it's a beautiful color. So what I did was I got a small paintbrush. Here's a painting tip. Instead of using blue painter's tape, which can be time consuming and you can still have bleed through, I am using a bench scraper. I'm going to place it right up against the raised part on my door and it's going to be a guide to use. And it's also going to be a fantastic paint barrier. This bench scraper works so well. It was super fast to paint and I got a sharp, crisp line. Occasionally, all I had to do was just get a damp paper towel and wipe off the edge, and then I just went right back to it, and it worked so well. I've also seen it where people have used uh, putty knives to put up against it to get a crisp line, but this will work wonderfully in place of painter's tape. And then I also used that champagne metallic paint as a stripe on the feet, there was a little indentation. And so I just painted that right inside and it really ties in with the rest of the Bombay chest. And then finally, I am going to be painting the hinges and the knobs. I really loved the knobs on this piece. I thought they were so decorative and beautiful. So I wanted to keep them. But I, again, I wanted them to tie in with the color scheme. So the hinges and the knobs got painted with a sponge brush. And then I took a paper towel and I wiped off the excess just so you could see a little bit more of the detail coming through. And I really think that this paint just brought these knobs to life. You can really see the details so much clearer. And I love the way that they look. Now that all of my paint is completely dry, I'm going to bring it back into my office with the help of Twin A. We brought it in and placed it down and then flipped it upside down. And then I put the feet back on, just twisted those right onto the base of the Bombay chest. And then we flipped it back over. Now it's time to reattach the doors. This was a fairly easy process because I had the hardware and screws labeled and organized in my plastic bags. So we made quick work of putting everything back together. And finally, I added the freshly updated knobs. To seal the paint, I'm using some Waverly wax. I got a lint-free cloth and I dabbed some of this wax onto the cloth and I just rubbed it all over the place. This is a great way to seal it and I really think that it makes the colors a little more saturated and protects it really well. I am just elated with the way that this Bombay chest looks now. What a transformation. It went from 
a piece that was hiding in the closet to a timeless and classy piece. The white and gold coordinates perfectly with the room design and color scheme. I'm excited to have some extra storage as well as another place to display my florals, crafts, and accessories. If you have a piece that's a little rough around the edges that's hiding in a closet somewhere in your house, pull it out, sand it down, give it a coat of paint. Updating your piece is all it may need to make it look absolutely fabulous. I hope you enjoyed this furniture transformation. Thank you so much for watching.